Well, this is the hour. We'll take your calls with Linda Selvin. Questions about the psychic realm, or if you want a reading, just ask her a specific question, and she'll take it away. And welcome back. Dr. Linda Selvin with us. George Nori back with you. Linda, earlier you had mentioned the late Dr. Evelyn Paglini, and she was into candles in a big way, and I noticed you are too. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, she had her line called Mystical Blend, and I have my line called wicks of wisdom and uh i've been doing it since 1999 mine were very different mine's a a combination of uh santeria and kabbalah hers were more pagan and i think she learned a lot from her grandfather and i was trained by a santerian priest and then my rabbi helped me understand where the candle and kabbalah represents the soul of man and the wick when lit is the flame which is light which is god so you're feeding god the petition so it's it's all spiritual again it goes back to the light like lighting candles and, and religious ceremonies hanukkah birthdays whatever it's it's all light it's to bring us out of the darkness and that's what i do but i wanted to ask you a question if that's okay sure because, you know you you give so much in all your shows and you're interviewing but it's not always that people go around but like have you had the lucid dreams of a relative or somebody from spirit, and then you wake up and you think, oh, my God, did I really meet with them? Did they really talk to me? Like your own experience, you wake up and you go, like, oh, my God, you know, you're startled. And then you come back into your, into your existence in your room and you realize, am I alone? Did I really experience that? Everybody goes through it. But can you remember the last time you had um, a lucid experience like that? I've had lucid dreams, of course, but I haven't had lucid dreams about the dearly departed loved ones or friends. Uh, I've lost a father. He died at 88. Good run. It was a good run. Uh, I lost a sister who died of a brain tumor. That was sad. Uh, I've had I've had many friends who have passed on a couple uh, over the last few years. Oh, Rosemary, Evelyn, I mean, it's, it's, it's numerous. It's getting worse as we get older. We see more and more of it. But I haven't had any connection with them, and I don't know if I'm not, if I'm blocking it on, on for some reason or... Well, that's where I'm going, because a lot of times we will, people in general, block it out of fear of what are they going to say, what is it going to feel like, what if I don't really feel it, and other people say, how come my mother hasn't come, how come my dad doesn't talk to me? But there's ways to turn it where you can relax and say, I'm, I'm willing to hear from you if you want to show up. And you can talk to them, and eventually it'll come through in a very calm, loving manner. It's like somebody wants to sell a house. Oh, I need the money. I want to flip it. I need to reinvest. i got to pay off my bills. As opposed to, I'll say, no, you want to attract the right buyer who's going to love this house like you loved it for their highest good so that you can move on for yours. And all of a sudden the house will move when there's been a block. So the way we think can create that dark space or that block or that obstacle, then flip it and the light comes on and things start happening. So even if you were to say something before you go to sleep, okay, Dad, I'd love to hear from you if you want to come in. And maybe you it's usually within a three-day or three-week period that it will change. Try it. All right, I will do that. Let's take some calls here for you, Linda. This hour is going to fly by. We'll start yeah. by going to Lisa in the Queens in New York. Welcome to the show. Hi, Lisa. Hi, how are you? Good. Hi, good, good to have you with us. You have a question for Linda? Yes, I do. I wanted to know if any of my loved ones are coming through and if it they have. It doesn't work that way. I, I need one name. I, I don't just do. Uh, that's that's like doing a party line. That's not the way I work. And I need one person in particular and I can get a message. But I can't. I, okay. There's a great grandmother from your dad's side and there's also a great grandmother on your mom's side. But it's more on your mom's side that you take after more than on your dad's side and the creative part. But uh, who studied languages? Was that your great grandmother? Different language? I. I don't know. Um, could be because um, where they were see, from? My, were they not from the state? My, yeah, my mother's parents were from Italy. So oh, okay, be. then that's the other language. I'm not really that's sure. Did I didn't, your grandmother and great grandmother that lineage is who's around? Do they take care of you constantly? You cook and you write, and your creative um, brain comes from that whole side of the family. Okay. Um, Anybody specific so that, that the that yeah, you want? I, just, I mean, should I, I give you a remember. name? Yeah, somebody well, that I, I want I, to that I'm wondering about, or 
Sure, if you want to. But I thought you just wanted, I just picked up on the grandmother coming through. But uh, sure, who did you want to ask about? What's um, I wanted to ask about Dave. And who was Dave, Lisa? Uh, the man I loved. Oh, okay. Boy, it was a boyfriend. Did he die from an overdose or something? Because it looks like accidental passing. His, um, uh, no, not an overdose, no. Was it was it accidental though? Um, well, it was after surgery. It was something that had to do with surgery, a complication. So complications of surgery. I don't know if you'd consider that accidental. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Go ahead, Linda. That's more. No, I would. It's 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 gruesome, painful. Not good, huh? No, I would rather not do that one. I, the grandmother's more happy. And um, as far as a message, yes, he loved you. He left you too soon. And um, you have to move on. You haven't released the hold he has on you yet, Lisa. So that's what's holding you back because you're having a hard time finding someone to love like him to replace him. You may never have that um, depth again, but you will have love. Linda, one of our listeners writes in. Her name is Linda. She's 75 years old, and she can't call in because her husband is asleep next to her. So she sent an email to us. But she wants to know how her health will be. She's 75. She's strong. Uh, she's, she's, her health is fine. I can't make predictions of who's going to have a heart attack or who's going to have an aneurysm. That's not up to a human prediction. But um, I don't get any major... Inflammatory diseases. I don't get diabetes. I, I think she's healthy as an ox. She's got a very young spirit. She keeps going and going and going. She's strong. I don't get anything to worry about over the next three to four year period. I don't know what's going to happen in ten years. We maybe none of us will be here in ten years. I think we will. But Super. No, she's she's fine as long as and I just get she needs to change her diet a little bit and come back into more proteins and less carbs. When we were talking about the candles. Evelyn yeah. used to talk about different colors of candles for different things. That's Is, right. Do you do that too? Yeah, but mine, um, Evelyn had um, image candles, and she would also use the seven-day candles. And, like, the red would represent um, getting rid of negativity or green for money, purple. I use red and black. I use purple. I use green. I use yellow for health. I use... Um, I use white for balance, harmony, legal situations. So in mine, which is different from what she had, the color is not as important. What's important in my line are the oils that we use along with the petition. So it's the writing and the oils. With hers, it was more meditation and more manip manipulation with the image candles and writing. Hers was just a very different technique, just a different technique, but we got to the same result. That's the beauty of it. It's, it doesn't matter how you do it as long as you're doing it safely and you're not harming anybody, the result will be there. Why are churches so into candles? I think it represents light. You know, you've got the Catholic Church. You've got, um, the, 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 you've got all the votives. Um, you know, we started with candle magic at the day your mother says, here, make a wish and blow up the cake the candles on your cake. It's light. Um, the church has always had candles. You know, candles started from whales with the flubber because that's what was wax back then. And there was no color before man had dye to make color in wax. But um, the light in the candles would represent touching God, speaking to God, God's presence, the light of God, just like you would see in the Domo in Italy or in any Catholic church or Buddhist temple. There's, uh, they've got the candles with the incense and the little altars, or we with the Hanukkah candles for eight days. You know, you light the wick for eight days because the oil lasted eight days instead of one leaving Egypt or whatever. You know, it, it's all significant to get you out of the darkness and to give you protection of God, which is light. Let's go to Josh in Winnipeg, Canada. Welcome to the show. Hey, Josh, go ahead. Oh, hi there, George. Hi, Linda. Hi, Josh. How are you tonight? Not too bad, thank you. Yourselves? Good. It's snowing oh, up good. there? Oh, good. Oh, yes, it is. We're, get, we're getting the cold weather here. We're getting it's, down to negative. Here we go. Zero is cold, George. Negative 20 is pretty cold. But yeah, that's oh, cold. Oh, God. Flood through. <laughs> How can I help I you? Have a, I have a kind of a little too far question. I've had a really, I guess everyone's had a rough time with things with COVID and such, but 
I've really moved around about five times, five different places in the last two and a half years. And I'm wondering if I'm ever going to kind of get settled. Oh, and, you mean like apartments uh, or houses horizon. you have that you've been moving around your dwelling where you're living, you mean? Yeah, different apartments. And every time I move in, it's, I, I leave it better for the next person. I move it to the next place so it gets worse. And I also wonder sometimes if my grandmother or no, my no, 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 no. A lot of times when you keep moving around, it, yes, there could be an entity that is following you or attached to you. And cleansing and healings can release that entity if you have an entity. Other times people move and move and move, and it's called geographic because you're running from yourself or something from the past that's within you, and you think the next apartment or the next house or the next neighborhood is going to fix it, and then wherever you go, there you are. So part of it may be exterior spiritually, and the other part might be something that you're still coping with or dealing with internally, and that's what I get to help identify in private sessions to figure out why you've got this imbalance and the fragments where you can finally come to be at peace and, and settle down and just stop running. You won't have to move again. This next, I think by, uh, where we, December, by April, May, June, by June, summer of 2023, you'll be home. Whatever that is for you, Josh, you'll finally be at home, and you're not going to feel like you have to get up and go again. Any follow-up there, Josh? Go ahead. That, that, that's, that's really great. I'm going to mark that date down, 2023. <laughs> yeah, well, just... call me and let me know. I will. And can I ask you one little small thing? I had a really wonderful friend named Max. He lived to be 90 years old, World War II, Lancaster, but was shot down, was the only one to, to live. And he I was a heavy was smoker, and I think he had two or three sisters, right? He had, there's a lot of girls around him, and he was also very musical. He lived a very long, healthy he – was a, he was a happy guy. He was a good guy. Mm-hmm. He was right until the end of the, and the hero and, and everything else. And but he had happened. attitude. He had a good attitude. He's jovial. He's still jovial. He says hi. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. that's wonderful because I see his number 43 all the time. In fact, it's That awesome. also means that he's around you. I was just going to say he's more like a guardian angel for you. So when you see his number, when we see numbers repetition, re- repeatedly and it's repetition, repetition, that's another way of knowing you're in alignment with the universe. Like when you see 111, 444, if his nine, number was 43, that's the connection to that spirit. You're right on target. This is good. Thank you, Josh. We're taking calls with Linda Salvin. Her website is her name, linked up at coasttocoastam.com. She's got a public contact number that you can get off her website where you can call and set up appointments for readings and things like that as well. Next up, let's go to Barry in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Hello, buddy. How are you? Hey there, pal. What's going on with you? And all the coaster coasters out there, George, I'm telling you, you got the greatest audience in the world, and I'm one of them. Yes, we are, and yes, you are. <laughs> I love that re- response. But listen, I talk, just hello to all my buddies out there in Coast Land, of course. And boy, what a profound show tonight, George. You know that I've got a little bit of a history in the last few years of suicide possibly yep. and thanks to your wonderful guest thank you linda girlfriend and uh you have reinsured and reamped my uh, uh desire to live just as long as i can oh my god i just got chills i just got chills you know when we get suicidal ideology where we think we're going to kill ourselves most people at some point in their life get the thought it's a long-term solution to a very short-term problem, okay? Um, like I said, I've got three, my grandfather, my great-uncle, and my uncle, all of them. Um, life is not easy. There's challenge. There's pain. But to miss out on what's here, our lesson is to live it. God's gift is our life, and our gift back to God is to live that life. When we take it away... We're actually hurting our God. I, um, because of the suicides, you're in South Carolina. I was in North Carolina this summer, and then I went to Cleveland uh, two months ago to research my mom's family because I only heard about Cleveland all my life. So I went to Cleveland, and I found my great-grandfather's uh, grave at the Jewish cemetery, and I stood there. I said, what did you bring here from Poland that everybody had to commit suicide for? I wanted answers from the grave, and I didn't get all of them, but I came back with some peace in my gut. You got and some I, of them, though, huh? 
missing. Yeah, because I put together, I went on this little research tour to figure out where my mom was from that I heard about all my life, and the grandfa- great grandfather was a rabbi. And it's like, okay, why did all these people die? What was the illness or the depression? You know, there's no reason to commit suicide, no matter, how, look at the vets, the post traumatic stress, the. Um, mental illness, the drugs, they're, 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 life is a gift, as hard as it is, as lonely as it gets, and if I can just give a glimmer of hope, like with you, and you feel like there's one more purpose to just, just, just keep going, your time will come, and yes, there's life after life, but it's not our choice to say when we're going to die or how. It's not. It, that's what happens organically. So just keep going, and if there's anything I can do to help you, just call me off there, Okay. Super. What about curses? What do you think of them? I believe they're real. And we've talked about familial curses where they come in from families many generations past. I believe people can put a curse on. And Rosemary used to write about, what what was her book, on the djinn. The djinn. Mm -hmm. She she wrote that beautiful. I have a signed copy from her from, what, 2013. And she talked about the djinn and the curses and what would happen overseas and how people could hurt I believe that families have cursed like eight, nine generations ago um, if somebody was angry. And that could be probably what happened to my mom's family, that somewhere along the line the men were cursed and they all died. I don't know. My mom used to say the family was cursed. But you can't really see a curse, but when you have constant obstacles, it could be a curse. I, um, With my candles, the good luck power removes the curses. But a lot of times people have to see beyond what they're afraid of, and if there is a curse, they can be removed most of the time. If I find a case, I can't. I'll send them to somebody who's more into the paranormal that's really more capable than what I'm capable of doing at this point in my career. But I think that dark stuff is real out there, and it can do harm. There are poltergeists, and there are the ghosts and all that, but that's the paranormal. I don't deal with that. But the curses, yeah. I believe it's real. I don't think it's a fantasy. I just uh, don't want to dive into it. What about the person who puts the curse on? What kind of person is that? Angry, negative, jealous, somebody that just wants to see nothing but the evil or the dark, or they're in so much pain in their own selves, they want to um, attack and throw it on somebody, which is where I think the general generational curses come from. Some relative, you know, 300 years ago was pissed off at some, excuse me, was angry at some. E, 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 e. He hit the button. So the um, whoever it was would throw whatever kind of curse on it. Um, witches do have formulas or, or technique, I guess, to do some damage. I don't dabble in the dark, so I can't speak for how it's done. I do have tools to undo it and set freedom within the family unit or within the person itself. We're going to come back in just a moment with Linda Selvin and take final phone calls. Those of you on hold, just hang there, and we'll do our best to get to each and every one of you. Her website is her name, lindaselvin.com. And uh, the phone number for public readings for her, which are on the website, but it's one 509 1077 1-888-509-1077. We will be back in a moment. I'll tell you what's in store for tomorrow. We've got a great series of shows for you all week. And no tapes, folks. We're live on all the holiday days this week and next week, too, because we're going to run into New Year's. So we'll be back in a moment on Coast to Coast AM. On our next Coast to Coast program, we'll talk about solar cycles, volcanic activity, and how it could affect agricultural losses next year. And later on, the dreams of interpretation of lucid dreaming and more on that. And, of course, applied psychology and quantum physics and how does that deal with consciousness. That'll be our next Coast to Coast program. And welcome back. Linda Selvin with us and your final calls. Linda, how do we know that little voice we hear is not our mind playing tricks with us as opposed to really communicating with the departed one? Uh, That's a great question. And most of us cannot communicate with the departed one. And there's a lot of charlatans out there teaching people, convincing people that we are all like a satellite 
and connecting with that antenna, and I have yet to find it to be true. So I just suggest people use caution if they're really trying to cross that, like, that membrane. You know, I was trying to explain earlier, like, the physical world to the spiritual world, where, like, if you're sitting at the bottom of the pool and looking up through the water, you can see the difference. It's the same thing trying to break through to the spiritual world. I don't suggest it, and I used to say after I really got heavily into the field, it's not uh, something I wish upon even my worst enemy. It's not fun, and it can be dangerous, just like the Ouija board, which I know is your favorite topic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah there, there's some real stuff with it, and there's some real negatives with it. And a lot of the times where we're going to think we're hearing our mother or father or dog barking or something. It could be a part of the telecommunication going on, but most of the time I've yet to meet someone that's really tapped in like a true medium gift. So I just say use caution. If it's the intuition guiding you in day-to-day life, that's totally different. But just force yourself to go out there and cross that barrier and try to bring them in. Uh -uh, You've got to really protect yourself. I would suggest not to. Back to the phones. Let's go west of the Rockies. Mary's with us in Nevada City, California. Hi, Mary. Hi there. Good hey, to get you hey. on the show. To, um, to, to be talking to a psychic. This is amazing. So, um, How can I help you? Uh, One question. Sure. Um, it's about my son who I lost uh, about 11 years ago. What and was his name? Just short of his 35th birthday. What was his name, Mary? His name was Lee, Liberty Lee. Liberty Lee. Okay. And uh, I, I haven't heard much from him at all. I'd love to. I'm sorry. I, I can't hear she you. Said, I heard. She hasn't heard much from him, Linda, and would she oh, like to? Oh, oh, okay. I get something around his heart. So whether it was a broken heart, heart attack, or something that was of, of, of um, pain and illness, but I also get that there was an – I just get illness around him. He, like I said earlier, not all – Spirits are going to communicate with us. They don't always come back as much as you try, but he's very much around you. I feel like he had a real bumpy life. He wasn't a happy teenager, and he was kind of lost along the way. He never really found his his path. So um, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but he is around you. And do you, do you plant yellow flowers in the springtime? There's something about yellow flowers around that he says that he knows you love. Yeah, he's right about that. I, we do love um, him and his sister. Well, I get yellow flowers. Yeah. He's there. He's there. Yeah, he he's, open up. he's uh, he had he's a broken there. heart as a teenager, no doubt. Yeah. And uh, well, he, I can't, that's he, what he's he, saying. Yeah, yeah but um, he, uh, did he's around he had you. PTSD, and and that's why what he had an accident. And so I'm sorry? Um, he went before his time. I felt, and he's yes, very he much did. missed and loved so much. He can hear you every day, but he just told me that there was a broken heart from his teenage years and the yellow flowers. So that's like just a little tidbit because there's other people I have to help on the show tonight. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. He's here. He's there, Mary. He's right there. There you go. He's right there. Yeah, he's right there. I mean, I don't just make up yellow flowers and a broken heart at teenage years. Are you? Do you (laughs) visualize the person as well, Linda? Sometimes the clairvoyance or the actual, it's called remote viewing, where I actually see the person. And I was thinking during the commercials, a lot of people may have apparitions where we actually have the visitation of a loved one or the atom. Or sometimes you see the dog running around the, 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 the den where they used to be. Or um, I've had apparitions of, of, of uh, famous singers pop up in my living room. I've had an old boyfriend pop up. It's been weird, but I think it's a ghost, or, but I actually see them. And that's called apparition. That's when the spirit makes a, a definite appearance. So we're not crazy. It's just learning how to identify the different things that happen. And for those that are listening, because I've had a lot of uh, people sending me emails from the Bible, and, and my spirituality is not scripture. It's just something I found in the universe. And it's just, I just, I don't believe in any one God other than that there's something out there for everybody. However you get there, it's, it's in your heart. And if you let go and start praying, like George asked earlier, prayers can be answered. It's just, some, it's, it's how you say it. You don't have to get on your hands and knees and talk for 20 minutes and say, thank you for this. And I wish for that. And this for him or her, and boom, you're done. It's simple. 
people make it too difficult. It's just very simple. Life can be simple. Let's go to John in Alberta, Canada. Hello, John. Thank you, sir. Hi, John. How How's it going? Okay. Good. What's I'm what's your question, John? I had a kind of a rough 2022. I was injured and in, uh, in recovery, and I'm just wondering if 2023 is going to bring me a little bit better luck. By June, you should be totally on the other side of everything that's gone on with you. Twenty, well, everybody's had a rough time through, you know, since COVID hit in 2020. 2022, we started to get back out in life, and it got crowded again. So yeah, people are bumping at each other. What did you? What kind of injury did you have? You'll be okay. I think you're almost on the other side of the worst of it anyway. I think you're limited. I blew my back out. That that hurts. Yeah, the lumbar. Ouch. It's painful. That's painful. I threw mine out in, in September. I couldn't move for three hours. It was horrible. But um, you'll be okay if you get the right treatment and do the exercise. But you have to be a little more conscious. And sometimes this, that's just, you know, your own God saying, like, slow down, watch what you're doing, and you can feel your own self. You know, lumbar usually represents a financial insecurity where holding everything in your cervical area means you're wearing the weight of the world upon you and something with your thoracic mid-back means you don't have enough emotional support. So the whole body represents something going on emotionally, which could have been why you stressed out and pulled everything. But you're okay. You'll get better. All right. Thank you, John. Appreciate you being part of the program. Next up, let's go to Tammy in Raleigh, North Carolina. Welcome to the show. Hi, Tammy. Hi, George. Um, thanks so much for taking my call. Hi, Thank Linda. You. Hi, Tammy. Um, How are you? I'm, I, was just I'm in great. Boone. I was in Boone and Charlotte and Asheville. It's beautiful there. Yeah, I'm from near Boone, about 45 minutes from Boone originally. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. beautiful. It's beautiful, and that's when I go there. That's when I kind of get a re-energize. Yes, it's very spiritual in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Oh, my God, it's yes. wonderful. How can I help you? Um, yeah, I was wondering if it's possible to tell me my life's purpose. What's your birthday? Um, eight nineteen. What year? Sixty four. Life's Everybody's purpose. Like, huh? Life's purpose. Everybody's life purpose is to love. That's the main thing. If you're looking for your career and what you're supposed to do, I think you're a business person. You're a one of compassion, and you like helping others. So I believe that you're more of service than anything. You're also very creative, so writing and publishing would be really good for you as well. It's cathartic as well. You've got a lot of stories. You have a lot of stories to tell. So maybe look at your creativity, but it's really your one to help others whether you go in the health industry or if it's mental health or if you're volunteering. You can even, you know, rescue dogs and, and, and work with animals. You've got that kind of heart. So go fulfill it because that's what's missing. You need to give more because you get so much back. I think you're looking for that place to plug in. We've got uh, whose turn? It's Kim, Long Island, New York now. Hey, Kim, thanks for holding. Good morning, George. Good morning, Linda. Thank you for the call. Um, I had a rough, we all had a rough, yeah, I know that. Uh, but uh, I am still trying to catch up with my parents' death. Uh, my father passed just uh, a year was yesterday, and uh, 12 weeks later, my mother passed. Oh, geez. Yeah, because they're soulmates, and they needed to be together. A lot of times when they go one after another, like in tandem, that happens they were a lot. so well connected. Yeah, they were so in love, they couldn't be without each other. It was time. It's in, and you have a couple of years to go before you're really able to breathe comfortably. It's a lot of grief and a lot of loss all at once. And when it hits like that, it's, 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 it, it takes your breath away. It takes your breath. They're happy. They're conjoined. They're back together. You're the one that has to deal with the absence and the abandonment. But their heart and their love, they're here. They're around you. You're not alone. It's just that you can't see them. But you can't. No, I can't. And I wish I, I wish I could get just some sort of, you know, I guess peace. You know, I am looking for that, and I wish I could just get some peace and know that they, they, you know, they have something to say to me. You know, something final. Uh, and, Why don't you uh, call me off the air? There's a lot to be said, but you got both of them right around you. But they're happy. They just want you to be stronger and to keep going because you're, you're, you're stuck, and they want you to not be grieving. They want you to live your life, and they were both very strong influencers in your life. They were both very supportive of anything you decided to do. You had more issues with your mom than your dad. 
I, it was almost like you were a daddy's girl at times. Your mom had gotten away, but um, they they know that you're comfortable, they know that you're safe, and they know that you're going to do the right thing is what they're saying. So I don't know if that has to do with the estate or something that they left behind that you're cleaning up because you're still in the throes of, 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 of liquidating. Cleaning things up. And you can get a hold of Linda through her website, uh, Kim, which is... Linked up at coasttocoastam.com. Time for a couple okay. more calls. Oh, oh, God, two at once. That's horrible. That is. AJ in Huntington Beach, California. Hello, AJ. Yeah, hi, George. Hi. Hi. And yeah, I wonder if you could tell me um, regarding what you see is the best for my career uh, career choice. What do you choose? This? You've got two or three options. What are you doing right now? Because you will have a career change or a directional change around August of next summer. What are you doing right now? What do you want to do? Because it's it's more on your own rather than working for others. I think you're at a point where you want to spread your wings and be your own boss. What are you contemplating here? Oh, whether uh, in, in the health and wellness, um, mm-hmm. you know, selling health products. Okay. Well, that would be you. independent. That would be independent, and if you really concentrate on it, and you have a really good support system with the unit that um, offers the the product, I think you could do really, really well. And within two and a half years, you could be pretty well set financially if you really put your mind to it. You've got a lot of great opportunities. Financial reward comes. I'm what are we? Can 23 by 2026? You can look back and think of this phone call, and you'll be like, "Wow, look what you accomplished!" Don't stop. And you're pretty specific with timing, aren't you? Yeah, I am. I can tell time. A lot of people can't tell time. There are certain times I can't say, yes, he's calling on Thursday. I don't like those. Is he going to text me tomorrow? I can't tell that. But I can tell long term, like in about three years, two and a half years, if this guy goes out on his own and does this with the products, and there's a lot of MLMs out there, and you can make a lot of money if you stay dedicated and don't give up. This guy has success and abundance. Three years from now, I'll look back, I'll call and say, oh, God, remember George, this and that. He's got it. He just needs to believe he can do it. That's Let's go, the conflict's coming. go to the state of Maryland on the wild card line. Hello, Ruth. Go ahead. Hi. Hi thank you, George, for taking my call. And hi, George and Linda. And hi. Um, Linda, I have a friend who's psychic. And just recently, just a few days ago, she asked me if um, I could get her some dirt from the cemetery. Oh. And I just want to know what your um, feel about I've this. I've done don't... that, and I had a psychic tell me go get dirt from the cemetery. It's supposed to be more pure, and it gets rid of negativity. But, you know, I, I, I felt weird when I did it the one time I was asked to do it, and then I brought it into my house. And this, we're talking 15, 20 years ago, and I literally had to get it out of the house because I brought in some negative energy because you're dealing with the dead or in the dirt there. I I don't know what she wants to do with it or what ritual she's asking you to perform, but ultimately it's not going to make or break your outcome. So don't get caught up in it like you have to. It's not going to harm you if you don't. I don't know, and I can't speak for her work. You know her, I don't. But if you're not comfortable, then don't. Um, A lot of people do use grave dirt. Is it it wrong to take dirt from a cemetery, Linda? It's not. I mean, I, I've done it. People have done it. But I think you're, in, in a way you're just disturbing the dead. You know, it's there for a reason, and I don't think we should tamper with it. You know, I mean, I've walked through cemeteries, and I hear people say, take me with you. Get me out of here. It gets cold at night. I hear the voices. That's enough. I don't need the dirt. But people use the grave dirt in ritual in many religions and various psychics and um, covens. It's not unusual. You can look it up, and they explain it. I don't know all of the details, but I was not comfortable when I actually did it. If you're not comfortable, Mary, then don't do it. You got it. Linda, thanks for being on the program. Have a great uh, Hanukkah and enjoy the holidays, okay? Thank you. Thank you again, George. You take care and happy holidays, too. You too. Linda Selvin, website linked up at coasttocoastam.com. For Dan Galanti, Tom Danheiser, Lisa Lyon, Lex Lonehood, Sean Ladasor, Stephanie Smith, Chris Boros, Tim Banal, George Knapp, and Ian Punnett, I'm George Norrie somewhere out there on Coast to Coast AM. We'll see you on our next edition. Until then, be safe, everyone.